was first of all here.
good. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Brother Rick, it's good to see you back. Okay, lead us in prayer, please. My gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, it's good to be in your house this evening. Lord, we just ask you to do this us this night. Lead thine direct. <coughs> open our hearts, open our minds. May we hear something from your heavenly throne, Lord, and even more so. Help us to use it in our daily walk and help us to be doers of your word, not here at home. Yes, yes. Lord, we just ask that you be with us. Lead God direct. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. <coughs> Whosoever meaneth me, now glad I'm for those words. Let's sing about it now. I am happy today in the sunshine bright. The clouds have been
Tonight is a test of faith for some of you that don't like cold weather. The Bible says, everything give thanks, even for the cold weather. Okay, for eaters. There we go. Just take something out of it. It makes you appreciate things like that, doesn't it? Amen. Working ones at that. Uh, these prayer requests tonight. Let's remember Haley, uh, hate, and uh, just continue to pray for that situation. Also for Rebecca Polynes. Uh Elsie says hi. Okay, uh, she's doing well, and just continue to pray for her, especially in this time. Uh, also, just pray for all of our shut-ins. Uh, Ronnie asked for a prayer for Katie Short. Uh, her numbers are very low. I would take that to be. I don't know if it's white blood cell count or what numbers it is. Uh, okay. But she's our great niece that gets the infusions every week. Okay. So just play for uh, Katie Short in this uh, in this time. Uh, James, that's for prayer for Chantel. Um, uh, that's niece, right? Yeah. Yeah. Niece uh, exposed by a coworker who has COVID. Okay. So just pray for that. You're seeing it on the news. Uh, I know the base is going to go back to uh, uh, locking down everything for COVID uh, come the start of the new year. Uh, so just pray for this, all those that you know. have Pray for Kirsten Wall, uh, also is in the hospital, that others that you know that's in the hospital. But that shot told does not get COVID. And, uh, and so uh, she's getting tested soon. Pray that the results will be negative. Uh, on the prayer chain today, uh, there was a prayer... Uh, chain uh, last night uh, for Brenda Wise. She's the uh, lady that started the shield uh, uh, shield badge. Shield badge. Uh, thank her uh, mother, which I actually got to talk to and meet about a year ago, uh, passed away this morning. Uh, so she asked for prayer last night because it was in the last stages and then she passed away this morning. So pray for the Wise family for comfort and for strength in this time. Elizabeth, I uh, asked for prayer for uh, Shannon and Katie Cottrell. Uh, I had a miscarriage and lost twins after years of trying to conceive. So I just pray for the uh, Cottrell family. And then also pray for uh, Christina Mendez. Uh, she joined the Army. Uh, Christina, they were here with uh, them. And so uh, uh, she joined the Army. She ships out to boot camp on January 4th. Uh, pray for Susan and... Uh, in June, yeah. who? Oh. Yeah. Jim. Jim. Okay. Oh, no, you don't. My, but my eyes are really bad. Okay, so pray for Susan and Jim, um, that who will keep uh, Michael and Milan while she is gone, and um, and that whole custody thing will have to happen now because uh, she's basically a single parent. Uh, Elizabeth also has a praise. Uh, she got promoted to a new job and her building department that starts in January. I will no longer have to miss so many Wednesday nights. Uh, so it comes with a raise, with an exclamation mark. Okay, that's a good thing. Okay, so that's awesome. That's awesome. So those are the prayer requests. Uh, yes, sir. I've got a little update on Haley. Okay. Um, they asked her uh, what does she want, you know, that wish. They, they make a wish? Yeah, make a wish. And she said she wanted snow. Oh. So they, they they went up north somewhere and loaded up a truck full of snow and brought it to her house and dumped it in the backyard. She was there in her yard playing in the snow. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. That is, that's great. And I I appreciate organizations like that that, yeah. that do those things. So. So those are the prayer requests. If you have any unspoken requests, you can raise your hand. Okay? And let's remember these, and also let's remember most of all for those for salvation. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, we do thank you for the day, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the old broken cross. Lord, we thank you for the promise that whosoever can believe and have eternal life. Father, we thank you for such love. Lord, we just ask you with these requests tonight. Lord, we lift up little Haley first of all tonight. Lord, we thank you that her wish was granted. But Father, I pray that you just give grace in that situation comfort. 
And I pray that through this time, Lord, that uh, Carlos and Didi would come to a saving knowledge of you. Lord, we ask that a miracle be worked. Oh, Lord, you are the God of miracles, and we ask for that. Lord, we ask that it be with Rebecca Polynes and help her. Lord, I just ask us to continue to grant her strength and protect her family, Lord, and help the treatments, Lord, go well. And Lord, that there won't be any more tumors. Lord, we lift up Elsie tonight. We just ask that you just give her comfort. Father, be with others that uh, are shut in. I think of Sherry and Dwayne and Lillian and Henry and Jane and Faye and Jewel and Randy and Connie and for others, Lord, that can't get out for the Ferguses uh, that had medical concerns. Lord, I just ask that you just uh, help them and encourage them in this time. Father, I pray that you be with those that uh, are uh, struggling with uh, the fear of getting COVID. I think of Chantal and just ask that she would stay COVID-free. Father, we ask you with Crystal Wall, Lord, and, and uh, Ms. Phillips, Lord, just to help her, Lord, as they're in the hospital, Lord, and that they would recover. Lord, I ask that you just uh, be with Katie Short. And just uh, help her, Lord, uh, with her, uh, her blood chemistry, Lord, her, her body, her body numbers, Lord. I just pray that you just uh, uh, bring them back to normal, Lord, and Father, that you just give her a recovery. Lord, I pray that you be with Sam and Kayla, and just ask that you just uh, give them direction, Lord, and Father, be with Sam and his and his uh, stomach issues. Father, I ask that you be with uh, the Cockrell family, Lord. Lord, be with uh, Sean and Katie and just uh, help them as they have dealt with this loss and they have to deal with this loss, that you bring your grace and your mercy and your comfort to them right now. Lord, I ask that you just uh, grant them a child. Lord, I pray that you be with uh, Christina and help her as she goes in the Army. And Father, I pray that you be with uh, Milan and Michael and just... Uh, uh, keep them safe and give them health and be with Susan and Jim, Lord, as they uh, as they deal with uh, the kids, Lord, and that you just uh, uh, protect Christina, Lord, as she goes through boot camp. Lord, I pray that uh, we thank you, Lord, for uh, promotion. And, Lord, we thank you for um, Elizabeth getting this job, Lord, being able to come on more Wednesday nights. And Father, I just ask that you just be with those that are traveling. I thank you for the sons getting back safely, Lord, and others that are traveling. Lord, I pray that you just give them traveling mercies. Be with Cassie. She goes back tomorrow. Others that they go back, that you give them safety. Lord, I lift up the unspoken requests. Each hand that was raised. Lord, I ask that you just uh, answer according to your will. Father, bring healing and restoration, reconciliation, family. Lord, show your grace and your mercy and your wisdom and your will for all of us. Father, provide provision, Lord, for those that are struggling. Provide help for those that are sick. And Lord, I pray that you be with our country and I pray that you be with our church. And Father, especially our country, Lord, that our leaders would follow you. Lord, I ask you our church that you give us wisdom. And Father, I pray that you just uh, help us, Lord, as we minister, Lord, that uh, we could win the lost to you. Lord, we lift up those for salvation. We lift up Valerie and Dan, Brett and Terry Burkett, Billy and Chris, Brianna and Jim, Bobby Gentry and Alex, Harold and Amanda, Andrew and Paul, Carlos and Vincent, Mitchell and Julio, Ray and Ray Valdez, Roy Garson, Pete and Allison, Scott, Steve, Travis, Mike, Mike's son, Michael Ramos, Margarita for Nat and Natalie, Lord. Lord, for these and others that do not know you, Lord, I just ask that they would come to a saving knowledge before this year's out that they would realize their lost state, and that they would receive your gift of salvation. Father, help us as we go into a new year, that you make us better servants, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, that we would yield to the Holy Spirit. And that, Father, that we would be better witnesses. 
Lord, I just pray that you be with the lesson tonight, Lord. And Father, that everything is said and done will bring glory and honor to you. Help us to understand your truth. Help us, Lord, to follow it and live it. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you do. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for all things. And we ask for our protection tonight. For we ask these things in your son's name. Tonight we will conclude our study in the book of Proverbs. Where are we going next? Come next Wednesday, find out. Okay? Two weeks ago, we went through Proverbs chapter 30 and we talked about lessons that we need. You know, we all need life lessons. And the big thing is, is that we need to heed or pay attention and follow those lessons. The, it starts out with a man by the name of Augur who is the teacher and he's teaching two of his pupils. And why did he learn? Why was Agar um, learning these things? He understood his need to learn. You have not arrived. There are still things that we all need to know. He realized he did not know God. And if you, don't not, if you do not know God as your Savior, Christ as your Savior tonight, don't leave here tonight without having that so. He respected what he learned from God's Word. We should respect God's Word. And then the next thing is, is that he requested God's help. We all need God's help. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> What he did learn, he learned the result of falsely accusing, and we talked about Jeroboam, how Solomon actually falsely accused him, and he came back and took the northern kingdom. We see the characteristics of a faithless generation, and you can turn on the news, and you can read the newspapers, and you can see in our schools and where God is being driven out of everything. And it sounds just like Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Things that we need to understand that greed is never satisfied. If you have your hope in things, you're never going to be satisfied. You're always going to come up short and you're always going to be disappointed. Mockery, and that's any type of mockery, causes blindness to the truth. In verses 17 through 20, we see the hypocrisy of immorality. There are people that think that they are upstanding Christians and they're faithful to God. And they're living together outside of marriage. They're committing fornication. They're doing things the Bible says should not be done. You're a hypocrite. You need to get your life right and live a pure, holy life. In verses 21 through 23, chaos ensues when God's natural order is refused. And then following God-given instincts is wisdom and salvation. And we need to work walk worthy of our calling. And as we closed up the chapter in verses 32 to 33, we see the inevitable result of iniquity. And there will be a consequence. Whatsoever you sow, that shall you want. Also, be not deceived, God is not mocked. He will by no means clear the guilty, as it says in Deuteronomy. Stop yourself before it's too late. And then lastly, strife will happen if you don't stop. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Folks, we all need to be on God's page. We all need to follow holiness. We all need to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. See, we need to follow the lessons God tells us to learn. So tonight, 
My message is, and mother's advice. A mother's advice. You know, we can all use some godly advice. And we know this as the virtuous woman, the godly wife, all those things. But you know something? It applies in all aspects of our life. In Exodus chapter 30, or 20, verse 12, one of the Ten Commandments says this, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So, this mother's advice is to a king whose name we just see in this chapter, Lemuel. If you go and you look for the translation of it, it means for God or devoted to God. Um, most people believe that this is another name for Solomon. Because if you think of what advice is given here, Solomon could have used, could have followed that advice and been a lot better off. But whatever the case may be, there's a mother giving advice to her son who is the king. And this could very well have been Bathsheba. She knew David. She knew all the things that could go on in a family because of not following God. So the mother's advice, and what we all need to do when people are giving us advice, is we need to pay attention. How many times do we hear people just talk and it's just like the thing in peanuts, wah, 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 and we don't even listen at all. <clears throat> but we need to pay attention with what God's Word is saying. We need to pay attention what people who are following godly, giving godly advice will say. So in verses 1 through 2, 1 and 2 here, it says, The words of, to, of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. So, most people think that this Solomon, Solomon wrote this out because he wrote the majority of, of Proverbs. So they say that this is what his mama taught him. And he says, what my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows. We clearly know that this is the mother talking to her son because she says my son three times. And it's these things of these things you need to know. So it's an issue of getting your attention. How many times do your name have to be called in order before you pay attention? You knew growing up that you said your first name once. Eh, you had another couple of times. But then when your whole name is being said or the voice is raised, you need to pay attention to that. And we kind of see the same thing here. What? My son? My son? My son? You need to pay attention. And you know something that's all, that's good advice for all of us. We need to pay attention to what God says. In verse 3, the second piece of advice that mom gives is guard your heart. Guard your heart. Don't do things that expose you to bad actions. In verse 3 it says, Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. You know, Solomon could have learned this lesson. Because if you go and you read the history, it says that his many wives from many other cultures turned his heart away from God to other that and he started allowed to keep peace with them. He started allowing them to have temples and idols and altars and everything. All these different gods. There's only one God. Yeah. And folks, what we need to do is we need to guard our heart and keep it pure to our Savior. He says, don't give your strength, don't give your power unto women or your ways to that which destroys kings. You know what brings down empires? In nations, immorality, <clears throat> wickedness. We see that today. 
So pay attention, guard your heart, and then guard your judgment. I guarantee you if your heart is impure, you will have impure thoughts and you will have impure judgment. So you need to guard your heart so you can have sound judgment. In verses 4 and 5 it says, It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink, and what? Forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. You know, we see, and I, I, and I know for a fact, that there are decisions made in our government made over cocktails. And my mind, go, and my, I, my thought goes, is how do you think you have clear judgment when you're socializing like that and you're doing that? You're just talking about your relationship and what helps you out and not what helps out them. This is what's happening in our country today, folks. Right. Right. People are more care, they care more about their position than they care about the people that they represent. Right. Right. And so we need to guard your heart so you guard your judgment. And that is on both sides of the political aisle, folks. Because everybody's up there for self-service. And if you don't believe that, come talk to me. Okay? Verses 6 and 7. Provide comfort to those in desperate need. Boy, we see during this pandemic, we see that this whole issue of what has done has been used for political leverage. It's wrong. Okay? You need to do right things to those that are afflicted by this and help people out. In verses 6 and 7, the illustration here is it says, Give strong drink unto them that is ready to perish. You know, when someone is suffering and they're in hospice, what happens? They're given morphine. They're given things in order to what? To ease the pain. Make them comfortable. Same concept here. Okay? And wine to those that are of heavy heart. We have a lot of people depressed. I, I, I'll tell you what. I have, uh, over the last several years, I've run more and more across people that have depression. And it seems like the whole, whole world is depressed. And you know, God's Word can clear that up. Amen. God's word can clear that up. It said, let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. That's not to say, hey, just keep him drunk. That's basically to ease their pain so they can pass peacefully. But you know something? That's what a church is supposed to do. That's what a country is supposed to do. We need to pay attention to God's word. We need to guard our hearts. We need to guard our judgment and make sure it's a righteous judgment. That's what Jesus says, is judge righteous, make righteous judgment. And then we need to provide comfort to those in desperate need. Galatians chapter 6 talks about, it says, as much as you do opportunity, do good unto all men, especially to them that are the household of faith. And then continuing that thought, verses 8 and 9, we need to plead for the weak. The Bible says, it says that we're supposed to lift up the feeble hands and the heavy hearted and all those things. In verses 8 and 9, it says, Open thy mouth for the dumb and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. You know, there's people out there who can't speak for themselves because their speech is depressed. We need to speak for them. Verse 9 says, Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Look at verse 9. That should be what 
we all do. We should open our mouth and proclaim God's truth. We should judge righteousness. Not how we think, but how God's word says. And then the third thing is, and please the cause of poor need. Because that's what Christ did. And we need to be Christ-like. So this is the initial advice that mom gives to Lemuel to rule correctly. And then we know verses 10 through 31 talk about finding a virtuous wife or a virtuous uh, woman. In verse 10, there is a question asked. Who can find a virtuous woman? Let's take this into a more broader sense. In today's world, who can find a virtuous person, period? Ouch. Better find them in church. Amen. Every one of us in here should be virtuous. Right. We're supposed to think on those things. Philippians 4, 8 says that there be any what? Any virtue, if there be any praise, if there be any good report, what? And think on these things. Think on these things. So, who, who can find people that don't think like the world anymore? Because I guarantee you a virtuous woman, a virtuous man does not think like the world. Right. It says, for her price is far above rubies. Now, all through Proverbs, we've gone through that wisdom is what? More precious than gold and silver and all these things. Folks, virtue and character and godliness, those are the things that most is prized the most in our lives. And so, Mama's giving the king some advice on how to find a godly spouse. Folks, this is the same advice you can find in a godly friend. So, we preached on this. The first thing is, the virtuous wife is faithful. That's not what you think faithfulness is. That's what God's word says it is. That's right. I'll put this in a more spiritual sense. There's a lot of people out there today who think that they are faithful Christians. And they come to church once a month. They're faithful Christians just because they tithe in the offering plate. And they don't do what God's word says. You're not faithful. Right, that's right. We're supposed to be faithful in all things. And we know the marriage relationship. Oh, by the way, the marriage relationship is an is a example of Christ in the church. Where? The We're supposed to be the virtuous wife. The parallel is obvious here. Okay? So, the virtuous wife is faithful. She is faithful to her own husband. Remember that? And Paul writes in a couple of letters, he says, Wives, submit yourself to your what? Own husbands. Okay? She's faithful to her own husband. She, he knows. He can trust her. And I'll tell you what, for any relationship, it doesn't matter about man and wife. It's all based on trust. Mm -hmm. And when you can't trust, there is no relationship. Because you're always second-guessing. You're always wandering. In verse 11, it says, The heart of her husband to safely trust in her, so that she will have no need, he shall have no need to spoil. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Don't go there, but let's think about that. Christ is supposed to present us as a glorious church without having what? Spot or Think about this. Can God trust us? <clears throat> we're, trust, we're trusted with the treasures of God. So think about that. You know, all through the Old Testament, the prophets come in and said, and said to the nation of Israel, Israel being Jehovah's bride, basically. He said, 
pure adulterers. Yes. And there's a, adultery after adultery after adultery after adultery. Folks, the virtuous wife is faithful. She's faithful to her husband. He knows he can trust her. And the second thing is her life goal is to do him good. Folks, that should be her life goal as a church. Her life goal is to do him good. She will do him good and not eat. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Not when she thinks it's convenient. Not when we think it's convenient. But what? All the days of her life. So, the first point is, the virtuous wife is faithful because she's faithful to her husband. She's faithful in her daily duties. Oh, we need this too. But, you know, the Bible talks about stewardship. Mm -hmm. And this is talking about stewardship because everything that we're seeing here can apply to anyone who has a ministry, anyone who's a Christian, anyone who's called to be a servant of God. She's faithful in her daily duties because she's dependable. In Proverbs 31, verse 13, it says, She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. See, the point is, is that in order to make something, you've got to have some. And so she goes out and she gets things in order to make clothes. Folks, in order to be godly, we need to find God. We need to find his gifts and follow them and apply them to our lives. And then with our spiritual gifts, we need to work to edify the church. So she's faithful in her daily duties. First one, she's dependable. The second one, she's a hard worker. In verse 14, says, it says, she is like the merchant ships with brain and for food from afar. You know, um, there are there were all sorts of islands. If you lived in an island nation, there were no roads. You were dependent upon what? The ships. And so this is an illustration of someone who's, who, their lifeline is that ship. Her hard work is a lifeline to her family. The Christian's hard work is a lifeline to the church. She is like the merchant ships. She brands from food from afar. So she's faithful in her daily duties. She's dependable. She's a hard worker. And then she's a good steward. She's a good servant. She's a good steward of time. In verse 15, it says, She rises also wide as yet night. Yes, Ricky, you have to get up early. Okay. You're the bride of Christ. Okay. You know, I like when the alarm goes off to me. Or now it's Alexa said a... 15 minute timer or 10 minute timer. But you know something, the thing is, is that we sh truly show our faithfulness when we know it's time to do something and we get up and we do it. It says, She rises also wise at night and giveth me to her household and a portion to her maid. She makes sure that everybody is prepared for the day. Hmm. Christ says, give us this day our what? Yeah. 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 We should wake up in the morning and we should basically spend time with God. She's a good steward of time. She's a good steward of resources. Oh, also, as we've gone through Proverbs, what about the slothful man? He won't even lift up his hands off his thing. He turns over on his bed and says, oh, I can't go out and there's a lion in the street. So we kind of put this whole book in, in perspective here. We see all these things. It says of resources. It says she considers a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand she plants, she planteth the vineyard. You know, 
We need to guard not only our heart, but we need to guard God's resources. What we get comes from God. Right. And we shouldn't waste it. Right. You know, every Christian should be an environmentalist. We shouldn't waste things and just needlessly throw things away. Yeah. And so she she does this. It's just this. She considers the field and buy it. Okay? So she looks at it and says, can I do this? Doesn't go in debt, because Proverbs didn't talk about that. Okay? Um, gets the best deal. There's nothing wrong with haggling. There's nothing wrong with that. And then with the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. So not only builds a field, but basically she buys a field, but she buys it for a purpose. And folks, what we need to do is we need to, everything that we do has to have a purpose. And our purpose is to glorify God. Our time is to be used to glorify God. Our resources should be used to glorify God. Our health should be used to glorify God. It says she girdeth her, lo her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. You know, Paul told Timothy, he says, bodily exercise profiteth little, but I'll tell you what, we're, some, we're the temple of the Holy Ghost, and we need to keep our temples in order. Amen. So you get it? Okay? And the issue is that we need to exercise. Because God gave us this life to use, and if you're too tired and you, too, and you have no ability to do anything, what good are you? Ouch. So she's a good steward of her health. She's a good steward of industry. Basically, her mindset is to do things, not wait for someone else to do it for her. It says, she perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. So she rises early in the morning, she stays up late at night, and she gets everything done. And she knows that what she does is the right thing because she pays attention to it. When you go to bed at night, do you consider what you've done through the day? Did you use your time wisely for God? Was there an opportunity that you missed? And said, so I don't want to do that again. Verse 8 19, she says, she laid her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. Manual labor is not bad. Right. It might break you, like trying to get out fence posts in my yard this week. <laughs> but it's not bad. <clears throat> but the issue is, is that we defer all this stuff. And where's the generation? That George Where's the generation? to do things. Folks, that's our responsibility to train our kids to do that. And she does this. I'm sure her kids wake up and see her working on that. Watch. Your kids watch you. What do they see? Do they see someone who wants to cheat the system? Do they see someone who wants to basically try to cut corners. It's not the virtuous person. Should not be the Christian. So the virtuous wife is faithful. The virtuous wife is caring. She cares to those in need beyond her family. But her priority is to her family. Parents, your priority is to your family. <clears throat> okay? And then, extra, you go outside the family. She cares for those and need be on her family. In Proverbs chapter 20, 31, verse 20, it says, She stretcheth out her hand to the what? The poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the need. See, that's the same advice that Mama gave to King Lemuel. 
said you need to plead the cause of the poor. She prepares for any future difficulty facing her family. Here's Ricky's verse. She's not afraid of the snow for her household. <coughs> Knows her furnace works. Okay. Let's Got some clothes. It says she's not afraid of the snow for her household. For her all her household are clothes garden. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. See, she does the best that she can. And folks, that's what we ought to do as a church. We ought to do the best that we can. We need to help one another. We're supposed to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the what? The law of Christ. So the virtuous wife is caring. She cares for the needs beyond her family. She cares. She prepares for any future difficulty facing her family. Remember last chapter? Consider the what? The ant. Thou slugger. Okay? Consider God's creation and what these animals do. They do what God designed them to do. We're designed to glorify God. We're designed to be good stewards of what he's given. She cares about her husband's reputation. I'll give you a challenge tonight. Do you care about the church's reputation? Yes. Do you care about your family's reputation? Do you care about your workers, your work reputation? Do you care about all of those things? Her husband is known in the gates. You know, our husband is Christ. Do we make him known to a lost and dying world? Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Why? Because his house is in order. Because she is the perfect helpmate. And he is the perfect helpmate. And together they do great. So the virtuous wife is caring. She. Now, how do you get this reputation? A lot of people try to buy it today. Hard work. Yes. I live in it. Okay. <clears throat> but I would rather be known as a person of character than anything else. Because if I am a person of character, I will be a hard worker. If I'm a person of character, I will be a truthful person. I will be someone of integrity. And people can trust my words. And trust what I'm going and, and trust what I want to do, what I say. So she has a reputation based on character. And now it's based on how well she cares for her household. Her products have no defect. And verse 24 says she maketh fine linen. Not just linen, but she makes linen that exceeds the standard of linen. Folks, our faith should exceed the faith of others. Do we have fine faith? Or we just have what the world calls faith now? Hmm. Christ said, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you won't enter into the kingdom of heaven. She make a fine linen and sell it then, because it's worth being bought. And delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Her person, her personality, who she is, herself, projects inner power. In Proverbs chapter 31, verse 25, it says, Strength and honor are her clothing. Notice it doesn't say riches and might. 
It says, strength and honor are her clothing, and she will what? Rejoice in time to come. You know why? Because she's prepared for the future. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may what? Exalt you in due time. So the virtuous wife is carrying, we've seen four examples of that. Next, the virtuous wife is wise. Is wise. In verse 26, she openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. How often do you talk about God's wisdom during the day? How often do you talk about the Bible during the day? She opens her mouth with what? Wisdom. It implies that everything that she's having in her speech, let our conversation be what? Always seasoned with grace. See, with salt. Okay? That we give a hope. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Remember what Proverbs starts out about the fear of the Lord? In Psalm chapter 111, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is one, the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding have all they that do His commandments. His praise endureth forever. Are we wise? We've seen wisdom after wisdom after wisdom, chapter after chapter after chapter of Proverbs. Has that sunk in? Those are lessons that we need to heed. Secondly, she's a woman who trusts God and instructs and instruct her family to do so also. In verse 27, she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. This breaks Angie's heart as a school teacher. Because she winds up parenting people. Because the parents have advocated the wife. Because they want to do something else. Folks, your children are a gift from God. You should treat them as such. It is our responsibility as stewards of our children to train them right. And to show them wisdom. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. <clears throat> so I hope this advice is speaking to us. It should be. It should be. And then lastly, the virtuous wife is rewarded. She's blessed by her children and husband. In verse 28, it says, Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. She has great spiritual success. In verse 29, it says, Many daughters have done vigorous, virtuously, but thou what? Excellest excel us them all. Not for the praise, but because you do your best. Folks, that's what we need to do. 2020 has been a bad year. But have we done our best? You can still do your best in a bad time. And as we go into a new year, I want you to make a, a we need to make a commitment that we're going to do our best. So she's blessed by her children and her husband. She has great spiritual success. It's based on her relationship with the Lord. <coughs> In verse 30 it says, Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, 
but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So it's kind of like Ecclesiastes. Here's a conclusion then. <laughs> Fear God and follow Him. And that's really the conclusion of Proverbs. Fear God and live wisely. Because if you're doing that, you will not be empty-handed. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. You know, there are too many people today going on the laurels of other people, taking responsibility or taking the praise of what other people have done. And what we need to do is our hands make the labor. We all collectively work together. And what we need to do is we need God to give us the praise for it because we're glorifying Him. Heard some good advice lately? I hope so. You've heard some tonight. Better question might be followed some good, good advice lately? Let's stay. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time. Lord, just ask you this time of meditation. Father, just ask that you just help us, Lord, to follow the advice that's offered in the world. Father, help us, Lord, to hide it in our hearts that we won't sin against you. And Father, I just pray that you just help us, Lord, to have our past directed by you. Lord, as we close out this year, Lord, I just ask that you help us <coughs> to learn from the lessons that we've had. And Father, we commit that we will follow you with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of us. If someone does not know you as Savior tonight, Lord, I just pray that tonight they would be the one, that would be the night that they would cry out to you and receive their gift of eternal life. Father, as Christians, Lord, as believers, I pray that you just help us, Lord, to follow you more now than we ever had before. Help us, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit have full reign tonight. We ask these things in your Son's name.
Let's lift one another up, and let's follow God with all of us. Amen. 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 God bless you all.